this guy, Debate 101, an introduction to argumentation and debate. So the first question is just what is debate? What are we actually doing here? And debate is the contrast, the practice of comparing and contrasting ideas. It's all about ideas. We're not here to talk about what is like me versus you. This isn't about you and me, Jeffrey, going head to head, like physically hurting each other. This isn't a boxing match. This is kind of a boxing match where at the end of the day it's my ideas and your ideas, and they're going to hit each other head on. And so that's what we're all about in a debate round. So it's important because it's often easy to start to get caught up with the argument you're making and start to take it personally when somebody attacks your argument, but you have to remember they're not attacking the argument, they're attacking, or they're not attacking you, they're attacking the argument that you're making. And so that's a really important thing to remember. So it's about ideas. And the goal of authentic debate is the search for truth. The search for truth. We're trying to figure out what's the right answer to a question. So we had a resolution up on the board at the beginning of class that you guys wrote down some ideas about, like whether Chris Paul or Reggie Bush is a better athlete, right? And we can ask that kind of question. Is there a right answer? Do we know for sure that one is a better athlete than the other? No. Yesterday we talked about rallies and McDonald's and which has a better, which is a better restaurant. Did we come to any conclusion, Devante? No. But we had really good reasons for both. The search for truth is not about finding out that like 1 plus 1 equals 2. It's not that kind of truth that's undisputed. It's kind of more of the right answer. So this is the best idea right now. So maybe today Chris Paul is a better athlete than Reggie Bush, but tomorrow Reggie Bush is going to be a better athlete than Chris Paul. And maybe that has everything to do with the fact that right now it's January and Reggie Bush hasn't been playing football for two weeks, so maybe he's kind of relaxing and Chris Paul's in the middle of his basketball season. And so he's got on his game more right now. Maybe that's the whole reason that that's the story. But the search for truth. So we aren't looking for this absolute capital T truth, like what is absolutely true. We're looking for the best answer. <coughs> so how does debate work? What do we actually do in a debate round? We don't just stand up and yell at each other. We actually have some formalities. And I was saying yesterday that think of what we're going to do in these debate classes, kind of like I'm introducing you to a brand new sport. Pretend like you've never seen a football game in your life. You've never played a game of football in your life. In fact, you've never even seen a football, the actual ball in your life. If I was going to explain to you what football was, what would I have to do? I'd have to start with, here's what a football field is. It's 100 yards long, which, you know, is 300 feet long. And then there's an end zone, and there's sidelines that are 50 yards apart. And then there's 11 guys on each side of the field, and there's this ball that's shaped like this. And here's how you have to hand it off. Here's what a pass looks like. Just explain you all those things. And that's what we're going to be doing in this debate class. Is we're kind of walking through what are all the little pieces because you haven't seen a debate before. And so we're going to go through what do all the pieces of a debate round look like so that you can walk out of here the same way you would walk out of having your class of what is football and understand what does that game actually look like. So how does the debate work? The first thing is the resolution. The resolution is the focus of the debate round. So, in our conversation, uh, we have the resolution about Chris Paul and Reggie Bush, right? So we have CP3 versus Reggie. Right? So that's our resolution. So what if I want to start talking about Drew Brees? Does Drew Brees matter in that conversation? No. Drew Brees is irrelevant because I'm talking about Chris Paul and Reggie Bush. And so the resolution is how we're going to focus the round and make sure that we're all on the same page. So all we're going to talk about is those topics there, Chris Paul and Reggie Bush. It's just like if I showed up on a football field with my basketball and my shorts, and I said, all right, guys, let's start playing. People would say, wait a second, we're talking about the wrong, a different game here. So we want the resolution to be the focus of our debate rounds. The resolution tells us what we're going to talk about for the whole debate round. So everything that is the round has to be inside of a circle that is right here. So anything out here, we don't want to. Make sense? Any questions? So, we have two sides in every debate. So, we have this focus of the debate. So, this resolution is pretty clear. What are the two sides here, Jeff? Chris Paul and Reggie Bush. Chris Paul and Reggie Bush, exactly. So, sometimes the resolution is really obvious. It tells us that. Other times it might not be as obvious. Other times the resolution might say, Chris Paul is the greatest athlete of all time. Well, so I don't have. The negative is simply saying that Chris Paul is not the greatest athlete of all time, but it doesn't necessarily tell me a specific guy I'm supposed to be talking about. And so, we have two sides in every debate though, and they're called the affirmative and the negative. The affirmative team's job is to affirm the resolution, or uphold the resolution. So Devante, when we have Chris Paul is 
better athlete than Reggie Bush, what side would they, what would the affirmative say? Exactly, that Chris Paul is a better athlete. So the resolution tells us Chris Paul is better than Reggie Bush. That means the affirmative team is going to affirm or uphold that statement. They're going to try to say, when we focus on the Chris Paul versus Reggie Bush debate, the affirmative team is going to take Chris Paul. And the negative team is required to negate or reject the resolution. To negate or to reject the resolution. And so at the end of the day, the negative team is going to say, no, Chris Paul is not better than Reggie Bush. Maybe the negative is going to say Reggie Bush is better than Chris Paul, or maybe the negative team is going to say that Reggie Bush and Chris Paul are equally talented athletes and that we can't really compare them. Both of those are legitimate ways that you're rejecting the resolution. You're saying that statement is not itself true. So that's the sort of thing that the resolution has to do. So those are our two sides. We have the affirmative and the negative, and their jobs are to affirm or to negate. Resolution. So that's kind of how debate works. But we don't just need to know who has to go which way in the football game, we actually need to know how do you score points, right? Because if all we knew was the offense goes from left to right on the TV screen and the defense tries to stop them, we wouldn't know what the ultimate objective is to get first downs and ultimately get touchdowns, right? But we need to know what those are in debate. And in debate, it's not moving the chains, in debate, it's advancing arguments in favor of your side. And so, the affirmative team is going to be winning every time they're telling us why Chris Paul is better than Reggie Bush, and the negative team is going to be winning when they tell us why Reggie Bush is better than Chris Paul. So, there are pieces of the complete argument. So let's work on what those, there's three pieces. First, is that each argument makes a statement of possible truth. Of possible truth. So each argument says something like, Chris Paul, basketball is harder than football. Maybe is the statement. So maybe that's true, maybe it's not. I'm not gonna, I don't know whether that's true or not. I'm not a professional athlete in either of those sports, so I wouldn't know which is a harder sport to play. But both of those are possibly true. The second thing is each argument is supported. Each argument is supported. So if I'm going to say something like basketball is a harder sport than football, maybe what I say is I compare the percentage of people who start out playing basketball as little kids and the percentage who become professionals with the percentage of people who start out as little kids playing football and become professionals. And I say, well, only 2% of people can become basket, professional basketball players and 5% of little kids who want to be football players end up being professional football players. I don't know if that's true or not. But you have that, those two statistics, and so suddenly 2% is less than 5, and so that's my argument. That it's harder to be a professional basketball player. Support is important. This is me trying to find somebody outside of me, or some sort of fact, that makes me believe this statement of truth. And then finally, each eight argument will explain why it's important. So, why does it matter? Who cares? Or, so what? This is always the question, is so what? Why do we care? And this is really of import and important to you as a debater because this is why a judge is going to actually believe you and want to vote for your position. So you say that basketball is a harder sport than football. You support that by saying only 2% of kids can grow up to be basketball players, but 5% can grow up to be football players. And this is important because the fewer that can be professional athletes means it's a harder sport. Because you're actually telling me why that matters. And because basketball is a harder sport than because Chris Paul is a superstar in basketball and Reggie Bush is only a superstar in football, then that's going to be a reason that Chris Paul is a better athlete. So that's the importance is a really significant part of any argument you make. You need to explain why it's important. Now, just like in football, we don't call a pass that goes side to side just a pass. We call it a lateral. Or we call something somebody knocks somebody else over, we call it tackle. We have all these special terms. And in debate, we've got special terms too. And so the statement of possible truth, this is the three pieces that have names in debate. So the statement of possible truth is called a claim. So the statement of truth is our claim. So the claim is that basketball is a harder sport than football. The support, we don't call support, we call it a warrant. And the, why something is important? We don't call it important, we call it an impact. 
Now, do these words really matter? No. We can call these things statements of truth. This is my support, and this is why it's important. But, just like any good athlete has special terms for their game, or every uh, other activity in the world has special terminology for what we do, we call it students at Sci Academy scholars. We have special terms in debate, and those are claim, warrant, and impact. And so the three pieces of any argument in debate are claims, warrants, and impact. And so it's the same, it goes in the same way we just talked about. So my claim is that basketball is a harder sport. My support that I use is a warrant. My warrant is that fewer kids can grow up to be basketball players and football players. And my impact is that because it's harder to become a professional athlete, being a professional basketball player automatically makes you a better athlete than a professional football player. So that's kind of how the arguments are laid out. Finally, the last thing we need to remember is that me just getting up and coming up with my arguments that are fully structured so I have a claim, a warrant, and impact doesn't mean the round is over. Because something has to happen. Just like after one team scores a touchdown, they have to kick off to the other team. In debate, you don't just make your own argument. Debate isn't just about making your own argument. You have to respond to your opponent's arguments. And the response is what makes debate fun. If all the debate was was one side getting up and saying their arguments, they sit down, and then the other side gets up and says their arguments and sit down, then it wouldn't be anywhere near as much fun as if one side says their arguments, the other side says, here's why I disagree with your argument, and here are my arguments. And so this response is really important. And the response is going to be how we go back and forth. The responses are called clash in a debate round. This is an under page, but clash. This is just one other piece of terminology. In a debate round, when people respond to one another's arguments and they go back and forth on a specific argument, so maybe it's a response here and they say, yes, but there's a lot more players on a professional football team, so the percentages aren't a good argument. Suddenly that's how the other team would be responding and saying that's not a good way to measure. Are there any questions on kind of the basics of what we're doing here, what debate looks like, and why we have these special terms or anything like that?